there's one person that called me for advice and actually uh, went to meet for coffee. And he actually taught me something I didn't even know. <laughs> so <laughs> he, he, he was looking for me for advice. And by talking, he helped me as well. I'm excited to talk about my sponsors today, Gay Lisby's Million Dollar Arbitrage Group. Amazing, amazing group. This is a teacher. This is, uh, Gay was a teacher. She is a teacher still. You need to learn this is the type of uh, environment you want to be in because she's going to help you understand why. And I think that's the hardest part of this business is understanding why. Why is the red one popular when the green one isn't? Well, there's usually a reason. And what Gay does is probably parse that better than anybody, and she'll explain the reasons for those things. I think that's really powerful. Yes, she puts out a list. You're going to get, uh, get use of that list if you get in the group. Now, here's the deal. The group isn't always open, right? So you get on the waiting list, and you can join the waiting list through my link. Um, doesn't cost you anything to, to get on a waiting list. And if you uh, like her service, which I find that most people do, and that's why there's not so many openings, um, you'll be with her for a long time. And so it's amazingfreedom.com. She's part of Andy Slamet's group, amazingfreedom.com forward slash momentum. And you're going to get in to the waiting list. That's all I can get you on right now. You can use my name and see if that gets you anywhere. But what I like about in that, uh, what I like about what they teach in that group are the things that are going on. You know, the current things I've seen a lot of stuff going on about stores going out of business. Well, here's where an opportunity is. Here's why you want to do this. Hey, be cautious about this. You know, with Toys R Us coming out, you got to think about this. And that's the learning that you need to do. And gay is better than anybody else I've seen. So, um, amazingfreedom.com forward slash momentum will get you to the waiting list. Then hopefully it can get you in the group and then you're going to see me in there and, uh, we can chat anytime you're ready. Karen Locker's group solutions, the number four e-commerce solutions for e-commerce.com forward slash momentum. It's going to save you 50 bucks. Karen's our account manager. We recommend her to everyone because she's done so well for us. I mean, that's quite frankly, the reason we've been paying her for the last few years, but she's become an important part of our team. Her and her team are so involved in our account. I just see the emails coming back and forth. Hey, we did this for you. I just saw two listings today. And I'm like, wait a second. Why did they show up? I didn't put any listings up. They got, uh, they got uh, set off to the side by Amazon, and they reactivated them for me. You know what I mean? That's the stuff that just happens when you have a strong team, and I can't recommend Karen enough. If you use uh, my code Momentum, Karen pays me. I don't want to hide that. Of course, we all know that, but you're going to save $50, and it's a great opportunity to really, really um, build out your team with somebody you can trust. That's why I recommend them. So solutions for e-commerce, solutions, the number for e-commerce.com forward slash momentum. It's going to save you $50. Oh, and by the way, she's going to do an inventory health report. Why is that important? Well, guess what? Fees are going up. Is your inventory health number declining like ours is? Well, here's why, and here's what they can do. What I like is I get a spreadsheet from them and it says, hey, um, here's a bunch of inventory. Here's what we recommend. And I'm like, yep. Re refund, I mean, uh, delete, uh, return to us, blah, 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 whatever it is, and it's or destroy, and it just happens. That's what I like. The other thing that I have Karen help me with a lot is creating new listings. You know, we do a lot of the research ourselves, we upload our images, and then boom, magically the listing goes live, and I don't have to worry about it. Those are the services that Karen offers. Can't recommend her enough. Solutions for ecommerce.com forward slash momentum. Save 50 bucks. Use my code. You save $50 a month every single month, and it's a great service. Plus, you get that free inventory health report. I think it's a really powerful way. So I can't, uh, I'm so excited how many people have been joining her because I see it. And I'm excited because the, the messages I get from people are saying, hey, this is great. I finally feel like I can focus on something else because Karen and her team are watching this for me. And, you know, I highly recommend her. Next up is Seller Labs and Scope. <laughs> I almost said it wrong. It's it's amazing. I mean, it really is amazing when you sit back and think about, hey, I want to get this product up, and it's similar to this product, and that, sim that product does well. Well, therefore, if that product does well, they have the right keywords. They have chosen things correctly. So guess what? You scope, and you can see all that stuff, and that's what the, the most powerful thing in the world is to copy somebody who's done it right. That's what you want to – you want to take advantage of that, right? I mean, it's it's fair – 
uh, to see. And so therefore you could take and apply it to your listing and immediately get that same benefit. That's what scope does for me. Sellerlabs.com forward slash momentum. It's going to save you $50 on the service. Oh, by the way, it's free to try. So sign up, try it and say, Oh, this is how it's done. Boom. And then you're going to, the light's going to go on and you're going to be like, man, I can get my products out there. I just can't wait. Can't wait. Sellerlabs.com forward slash momentum. The other day I bought another domain. Yes, I bought another domain. It's almost like uh, I'm admitting guilt, but it's because I had an idea and it was something that was a pretty good idea. I think it's going to go pretty far. And so what do I do? I go to try godaddy.com forward slash momentum and save 30%. So domains aren't very expensive. You get a few services. It adds up a little bit. And I usually buy three years. I usually buy privacy, by the way, I recommend that too. Buy that, you know, it's not that much money, but when you can save 30%, it makes it that much sweeter and it makes it easier uh, when you're buying domains. And especially if you buy a bunch of domains, I am a domain collector. And so I do tend to do that, but that 30% makes it a lot easier. And I use GoDaddy because what I like is I can pop in an address I'm thinking and it'll say, nope, nope, try this version or try this extension. And then boom, there it is. Hey, you better hurry before it goes away. And they're right, you know, and so try GoDaddy.com forward slash momentum, save 30%. Also, I want to mention about Grasshopper. Who was I just talking to somebody the other day and they were like, oh yeah, I use this company called Grasshopper. I'm like, dude, did you buy it through my link and save 30%? Hello? No, they missed that. So save 30%. It's try grasshopper.com forward slash momentum. No surprise there, but you're going to save 30%. And what the, the real cool part about that is they're using it for their private label business. And it gives them virtually a second phone on their current phone without having to get another number. They can make up a vanity number. They don't have to go and do all the grief and, and sign long contracts. Pretty easy stuff. And so if you're creating a brand that you want to identify, you want to look professional, you want to look like a real company, Grasshopper is a great tool. It's an app you put on your existing phone and boom, you now have a customer service department. You now have a sales department. You now have a manufacturing division. You could forward it to somebody else. You can have it go to different voicemails, different departments, and it's all included. So try grasshopper.com forward slash momentum. Save 30%. Welcome to the e-commerce momentum podcast, where we focus on the people, the products, and the process of e-commerce selling today. Here's your host, Stephen Peterson. Welcome back to the e-commerce momentum podcast. This is episode 328, Julie Rowley. You know, I really love this interview because Julie is a person who's going to show you what determination can do for you, right? Uh, not knowing anything about selling on Amazon, selling at any place, she put her head down and did the work. She figured it out. She figured it out without any of us, without the groups, without the experts, without buying time, as I like to say, without taking courses. She figured it out. She realized, hey, one of her products went away, and so therefore I need to find it. Well, I can't, so I'm going to make it myself and bring it into the Canadian world and bring it into market. And not every time was she successful, but through grit and determination, she found success. And that's all cool. And it's very, it's very cool. And her life might have been good and maybe complete until she found the Facebook world, until she put herself out there, until she realized that there's got to be more. Other people might be having some of the challenges I am, so therefore let me put myself out there. Boom, fast forward. She's going to tell you how much her business has grown because of the relationships she's developed. Now, in her case, we're talking real relationships, but take that aside. Um, the benefits of getting to know others like-minded and the advancements it's done for her business um, are mind blowing. And that's what I, I just saw somebody else do it. I, I mentioned it in Facebook too, from Rocky mountain, they made contacts and, and they thank Travis and Paul for that. This is what you got to do. And it's uncomfortable. It's not easy. And not everybody's going to be the right person for you. You've got to find the right person with the right mix, make sure there's trust established and you've got to give a lot to them. It can't be one sided, but Julie will show you what's possible because anything's possible if you really want it, according to Julie. Let's get into the podcast. 
All right, welcome back to the e-commerce momentum podcast. Very excited about today's guest, all the way from the great north. I mean, the tundra. You might as well. They probably have snow right now. Julie Rowley, welcome, Julie. <laughs> welcome, Stephen. <laughs> I think you do have snow. Is there? When? When did this? When is the last glimpse of snow you had? Be honest. When was the last point you can remember? Uh, actually, when I visited my mom, I believe in May. We May. still had snow over there. Now she's in Quebec City. I'm in Ottawa. So we have a little bit, like, we think we have two months less of snow, but it still That's lingers way too long. It might as well be Alaska to me. I mean, it's it might as well be. I, although I do, you know, it's, it's funny. I've been to Canada a couple times. Been to Toronto. Beautiful city. Oh, my goodness. I remember that. And Niagara Falls, of course. Everybody's been there. Um, yes. But that's about my frame of reference of Canada. Yet, it's monstrous. Right. I mean, it's it's in each city, the way I understand it, it's almost like a little country because you're so far apart from anything. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Everything is far. Uh, we have a lot of land here. It's very different from uh, the United States. It's a beautiful country. Um, there's a lot less people. I think we're only like 35, 33, 35 million compared to uh, over 100 how many is there in the United I, States? I think there's uh, almost 300 million now, I think. And I might be there. way off. We, You know what? Neither one of us are uh, historians. Oh, no, we, need to, we need to go online and Google that. Yeah, yeah, that's what you have Google for, right? Hey, how many people in the U.S.? How often do you need to know that, right? This is once probably in the last five years we've talked about it, right? That's that's Exactly. <laughs> so, so where is Ottawa when I look at the United States of going up? Um, I think of Detroit going to Windsor. I think of Toronto being to the East Coast. I think of Vancouver on the far west. Where would Ottawa be? Uh, are you familiar with New York State and yeah. Syracuse? Sure. Well, that is probably if you go straight north. An hour and a, uh, from Syracuse is about three hours. Okay, so not too far from Toronto. Is Toronto west or east of it? Uh, Toronto it will be west. West, it's okay. Five hours. Oh five wow. Hours west. Oh wow. Um, so you go further. E okay. All right. Now I got it. All right. I'm, so you're almost Maine, very, like you say. I mean, New York, Maine. Yes. You're almost there. Okay. And very similar close to Maine. climates. Uh, very similar. I think we get colder a little bit during the winter, being a little bit further north, but very similar. Uh, very humid during the summer. Very. Uh, cold during the winter, which I cannot tell you in Fahrenheit how much it is, but <laughs> we get uh, it's cold below 40, 40 below uh, zero Celsius. Uh, so in Fahrenheit, we'll be quite cold as well. Well, I gave you socks that'll take care of that. You watch. You wait. You're going to be like, yes. Steve, send me more. And well, we better not talk about it. All right. So, so <laughs> now you, I hear a little bit of an accent. That's just not a Canadian, a, you know, take off kind of accent. What is that accent? <laughs> what is that? I am originally from Quebec City, so I am a French Canadian. So French. my first language is French. No kidding. So I will struggle with some words, even though I've been speaking English for many years. I still sometimes struggle with words. I make lots of mistakes in my spelling in English sometimes because of it. But yeah, I'm born uh, and raised in French. I only started speaking English when I was uh, around 18. No kidding. And so mm -hmm. when you when you were to school, did they teach in French? Uh, yes, everything is in French. Everything's in French, and then and then English a second. That's fascinating. Okay, so people are going to be like, well, why do we have Julie? She sounds very nice. Um, Julie is an Amazon <laughs> seller. And what fascinated me about Julie, Mel, the many things that fascinated me, but one was that Canada is her Amazon of choice for now, but it's yes. 90 or 95 percent. Is that still about right? Yes, 95 percent selling on .ca. And I think back to having uh, Brian Vino, Beaver, everybody knows him as, but Brian's been on a show a couple times, and he always talked about Canada being slow. Now, he sells toys and things like that. Um, so I guess he just said that, you know, compared to the U.S., it was night and day, the difference in sales. But for your experience, it isn't. Would you think that that's a category-specific issue? Um, do you think that, I mean, does that, do you get what I'm asking? I mean, why, why would it be different? You know, why would Canada be so attracted to the stuff that you sell? Uh, versus, I do not sell any brands. Uh, I do private label all my products. I wonder if that could be part of it. Um, well, you know, one of the other things that you told me, which was very cool, was that you have French written on your packaging too, right? So you have, yes. uh, is, it, is it Spanish and French and, and English or just French and English? 
just French and English, but that's a good idea. I should probably put the, all three languages. But there. you definitely should put Spanish <laughs> on it. I mean, in, because in the U.S., it's just a huge. As, as you move into the U.S., it'll be dominant. I mean, it's it's one of those things that you'll, especially the type of products you sell. And so, I think about that. Yes. Um, and you can mention the category you're in. Stay as broad as you want. Go ahead. Uh, yes, I'm in the health and beauty. Okay, so uh, health department. and beauty. And so I think that that's very cool. And I think that that is part of the reason you're having so much success. I think category specific um, because of geography. So I think Canada is a better example than the U.S. where, you know, because there's nothing in between cities, right? Between Toronto and Ottawa is pretty vast, right? There's not much space, yes. right? There's not much population there. And so therefore... To get a product, you need a service like an Amazon or whatever the equivalent eBay was, uh, Kimiji or... Kijiji. Kijiji. I was thinking kimchi. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true though, right? To, f to, fill out your, to fill out your needs, you need yes. to use a service. And I think you're a good example of that. And it fascinates me that Canada's yes, been that strong. When I started, I did started uh, doing retail arbitrage, and uh, a lot of my friends were like, why would people spend so much? I'm like, they can go to the stores. A lot of people are in the middle of nowhere. Like if you think of the Grand Prairie, middle of Saskatchewan, they don't have a Walmart like five minutes from their house, like a lot of people. So they will spend a lot more money to get it delivered to their house. Um, I think it's a big uh, big for them And it started, to have the Amazon service. Did it start with Amazon FBA for you? Uh, no, I didn't mention Merchant Fulfill on Amazon to start with. Okay, so you you started selling how long ago? On Amazon or period? Uh, <laughs> let, let, let's go. Let's go. Period first. Yeah, because I want to. I want to build it out because I, I think there's a, there's something to learn here. But go ahead. Yeah, for, all the way back. <laughs> well, all the way back, I think my first sales were uh, doing like a, a lot of kids do lemon and st lemonade stand. Sorry. Uh, when I was probably five, six iced, years old. Ice lemonade, I'm sure. Oh, yes, ice lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> I got shut down uh, by a mean police officer no, because wait. I was in front of a bank. <laughs> that a was police my, uh, officer? <laughs> Stop the bank this six-year-old girl? Oh, come on. <laughs> the bank called the police on me and my sister. Uh, that was very intimidating. So I, I, I kind of put an X on the lemonade stand after that. Lemonade, sorry. Uh, yes, that was very intimidating. Now, now, when I think of Canadian police, I bet you a whole bunch of people are thinking of Dudley Do Right. Was he? Did he look like Dudley Do Right? Did he have the hat and the no, red? No, 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 no. Regular <sighs> uh, dark suit, nothing. Oh, man, I want to think Dudley Do Right. How would he do it, ma'am? Time to take away the stand. So, so that wasn't a good experience for you. What did your parents tell you when when that happened? I mean, what 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 was the conversation? Do you remember any of it? Uh, vaguely, my mom and I sometimes still talk about it because uh, she thinks it's funny that I always wanted to have my own business. Um, she says she did, cannot believe that the bank did not just come outside and tell us to move. Uh, that was a little. I would have given you a hundred bucks. Look, sweetie, here's a hundred dollars. Go home. Don't come back. All right. Just and and then that way it doesn't affect anything. You know, and you made your money and yeah. you could have been out of there and it would have been goodwill. All right. Yeah. So you, you didn't get discouraged. Uh, oh, no. Oh, so no. your first foray at first. six. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't want to go to first grade. My, I told my mom, like, no, I'm going to start my own candy business. That's what's my second uh, idea. And uh, she said, well, sweetie, if somebody buys for 10 cents of candy and they give you a quarter, how much change are you going to give them? So apparently I told her, well, fine, I'll do my first grade only. <laughs> ah, so you didn't have to worry about giving change. Hey, did what made that? thought go into your head? I mean, that just doesn't happen. Why you wanted to own your own business? I mean, did you see somebody else? Was there somebody influential that, that gave you that mm, urge? My dad, my dad always had uh, his own business. He owned convenience stores. I was growing up. Um, and I don't know, maybe that's why uh, I always wanted, always find a way to make money for my candy. Right. So when you determine to want something and, uh, it's always there, been there in the back of my head. But what was so attractive about that to you? I mean, did he have something that you wanted? Was it the freedom you saw? Because, I mean, I'm sure he had, especially with the convenience store, the grief, right? Because it's labor and uh, inventory. Long hours, yeah, long inventory, hours. stuff. So, no, from that perspective, no. I think it's just the freedom to, not the freedom, but knowing that you build something, you're, you're working for yourself. I I think I would rather work harder for me than helping somebody else's business, if that makes sense. Yeah. 
I, I would rather. When you went to school, what were you thinking you were going to be? I had no idea. No idea. I had no idea. They tried like all those tests to figure out what you were going to be because everybody tells you you need to do the nine to five. I keep saying I cannot do the nine to five uh, work and try to figure out what my skills or what I was good at and nothing stood out. I always wanted back to go back to my own business, but I did not even know what exactly I wanted to do at that point. I know I just had a hard time working for somebody else. I would rather create my own, um, my own business and a nine to five, which now I work a lot more than nine to five, but it's on my own terms. Yeah. It's on your own terms. That's what I saw that, you know, I'd rather work 80 hours in a week to avoid working 40 hours for somebody else. Um, yes. When you think of like, I'm trying to think of Canadian high school versus American high school. And, and I think it's different today. I mean, it's definitely different today um, than what it would be back. Well, I'm, I'm much older than you, but back even, you know, 10, 15 years ago, um, they didn't give you a lot of direction. They would help advise you, and, but it was kind of really up to you. Now, in Canada, it sounds like they tested you to help you figure out what you were strong in. Well, because I couldn't figure it out, yes, they got me to do some uh, kind of answer questions, like uh, so you can decide if you have more skills for, you know, electronics, sports. Like, what was your passion? I guess. And did um, anything show for you? No, not really. They say <laughs> I was more of an artistic side, but nothing really stood out. No. <laughs> uh, the test results are back, Julie. And yes. guess what? They're saying so it was very discouraging because I didn't uh, know what I wanted to do. We can't help you. We just can't help you. I mean, we're just uh, sorry. Just give up. Go, go, and you're going to be homeless, Julie. I just want to let you know you're destined to a life on the streets. You're going to be homeless. I mean, it's a funny. What would you do with that, right? Now today, we would sit back there and say, "My God, this is probably somebody who can't be contained. The creativity within her, she's probably got the most potential." You know, it's funny. I, the more I watch this the more I see the outliers, who I used to think were the outliers, are the standard, I don't know, it's just a negative term, the, the, the sheeple, they call them, you know, there's the people, the lemmings, right? Of which I was one. But now the outliers that I see are the people kind of like yourself who will not be held down, who probably excel almost at anything they do. So therefore, when they do find that lane, they're a standout. All of a sudden, you're an overnight success, right? Yet... You know, all along you were yeah. successful, but one just jumps out. And to me, that's new thinking for me, at least. I have, I'm, not, I'm noticing that di that's so different than what I grew up with, you know, because the smartest kid in the class I always thought was going to be the most successful, right? The best athlete was going to be the best at everything. And that's not yeah. so true. Hmm. That is not so true because you are right. You, you, do, uh, you did say something that just resonated with me right now is I could be good at anything if I really want to do it. I, I would have A's in a lot of um, classes at school if I really interested in it. And but if you're a lot not, of time, you just give yeah, up. I, I, I don't give up. I just, why put effort on something I'm not interested in? Oh, so you just push along like, okay, yeah, I'll do, I'll do the minimum, move on, and then I'll find something that really interests you. What was the first thing that really interested you? What was the thing in school or did you have a teacher or a class or something that sparked like, huh, like some people have entrepreneurship, some people have accounting those of us who like accounting Anna Hill uh, <laughs> but what I mean what was it for you um what was the person that well the person or the class that that all of a sudden that reinforced your entrepreneur was it I mean was it fashion was it uh beauty school was it um economics was it accounting was it something that you're like huh this is reinforcing my six-year-old getting kicked out of in front of the bank this is me uh, you know what? I tried a lot of different small business along the way. I don't think there's something that stood out. I think I was just, I knew I wanted to have my own business, but I wanted to something that I love. And they um, just weren't. So, so there's no no class uh, per se. Okay. But everything that had to do with business, I did a small business class um, in college. It was just like a summer just to see if I was interested. So maybe that one would stood out. Okay. That really enjoy what I was learning. I mean, uh, I really love getting information. I'm the kind of person that needs to learn all the time. Um, what, what was your degree in? Uh, I actually <laughs> turned out to have a degree in, in uh, early childhood education, so I had nothing mm. to do with business. No, we've had this conversation, you and I, face to face. And to me, it's one of the best things you did because you understand people. I mean, to me, 
that's that's an art because if you understand the customer and you write let's we all know keywords right if you write the keyword if you could figure out the keyword for your health and beauty product and you write it knowing of who the person what they're looking for and you can answer their question and connect with them magic yes you win right yes so to me i think it's the perfect for you because I think it connects all the things that you wanted to. Um, you know, maybe it's not the accounting, maybe it's not the bookkeeping nonsense. That you can get hire, you can hire people for that stuff. You can hire. See, see, this is my downfall. I wanted to learn everything. I wanted to do my own bookkeeping. I wanted to do my own accounting. So I think that's what pushed me back a little bit. I wanted to learn everything. Nowadays, I learned that I need to hire to hire to help. Right. Right. Uh, you're not going to learn to to fly a plane if you want to go somewhere you'll just take a plane so that's something i'm learning to let go and focus on what i'm good at and find the people to help me doing the things i don't necessarily need to know in depth what why is that hard for you why is that hard for you i i I, it's in me i need to understand i'm a kind of person that needs i'm not a risk taker per se so i need to understand what i'm doing to make sure i do the right steps so i'm not like especially in accounting i want to make sure i'm not losing money but it's some subject that really turns my stomach uh you can talk to my accountant about that (laughs) (laughs) he knows (laughs) but that's it that's the best way though is to understand it or fight your way through it learn it and then say okay this isn't what i want to do boom here you go but these are what I want, you know, when you can expect, you know, good financial statements. I'm going to be doing an episode on financial statements. When you when you can talk about financial statements and these are the things that you really need to measure, how they get there at some point really doesn't matter as long as it's accurate and, and it's real. You look for the delta and then you can deal with it. Um, I don't I think that's very healthy, actually. Um, it's just interesting. Your personality wouldn't give it up until you understood it. I think that's a that's a strong point. It is yes and no, because I think in some ways I could have been a little bit further along right now in my Amazon.com. I think I wasted my first year on trying to figure out how to keep track of my inventory. <laughs> I was <laughs> That's a long story. I'll keep maybe for another show. But I was keeping track of every sell that was do, uh, or every purchase I was doing. At that time, I was starting with a lot of Kijiji sales. So I was putting everything there in a spreadsheet, how much I bought it for, how much the fees were what my profit, but I was doing that for every single item I have. When you get to, you know, over 500 to a thousand items and every sales every morning, it takes you a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, but did it, you know, and, and I would agree with you. Um, that's way too much minutia, but there might be a point where you might have, you might have, should have stopped, but maybe not at the end. You know what I'm saying? So if it, w- if it took you a year to do that, maybe six or eight months, you should have stopped and then you were comfortable enough because that, that information you gleaned is invaluable. I mean, that the, the fact that you knew your number so strong, I would hope would make you make different decisions. Oh, it did. It definitely did. Uh, the only thing is I didn't leave me enough time and I wanted to grow. But th- I did this because I thought everybody was doing that. My background is early childhood education. I know <laughs> how to potty train people, kids very fast. I can put eight kids to bed at the same time. I have a lot of skill, but business part, uh, all the accounting, how to keep track of an inventory. Like my daycare was pretty easy. I buy some diapers. I, I buy the inventory, what I need for my business, but the keeping track of a business and how to grow it was a completely foreign language to me. Um, and yeah. I had not really any help in that department how to do it. So I even asked my <laughs> the owner of the grocery store here, I'm like, how do you keep track of your inventory? That's how bad I was in this whole thing. <laughs> I think with. it's I think this is going to come up later in the conversation. That's where networking is the most valuable and you weren't doing it to be fair. Yes. We're going to get no. there. So we're going to talk about that. <laughs> All right. So you're okay. in college. You've got this dream of watching other people's kids and you're going to help with that. And then <laughs> no, you no, realize, no, no. <laughs> wait a second, huh? What's happening that, here? Actually, that was not even my dream. I started the early childhood education because my daughter was born. Um, and I did not want somebody to send her to another daycare. So I figure what that's the best way to have my own business and keep my daughter at home. Wait, you were going to open a daycare? 
I did. I did add my oh, own daycare on and off for 12 years. Oh, dear God. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I run away from kids now. I find them cute for like 10 minutes. Why aren't you completely gray? <laughs> I mean, I, I, it's just I have three granddaughters and they're little and we're watching them this weekend. Yeah. And I'm panicking because they, you know, they, A, they don't have any, they just jump and they don't have any concept of, you know, hurt. You know, B, they cry all the time. There's always somebody crying with the three of them. And I'm always like, I don't know what to do. Here's my wallet. Here's, here's a toy. (laughs) Take this, take some money, anything. But it's true. I don't know what to do. You negotiate very well with those. And they manipulate. They know it too. They're so good. Well, mom, You go to bed if I do this. Yeah. Well, if I watch two shows and they're like little negotiate, I'm like, where are you getting this? You should be in, uh, you should be in sales. They're like, well, if I do two shows and then I can do this and then I won't get up grandpa. And I'm like, all right, you can have whatever you want. Just go to bed. (laughs) So, so how do you get through that? I mean, how big, when you scaled, how many kids did you have at one point? Um, the biggest I had was 15, oh my goodness. 15 kids. Yes. How many, how many helpers along with you? I had dozens. Two, I hope. <laughs> no, <laughs> unfortunately only two, uh, full time and one part time. Okay. So four of you running this, this 15 kid business, that's a pretty big business. I mean, it doesn't sound like it, but my, my kids, and this makes me cry, spend $40,000 a year on daycare and for three kids. Yes. I mean, it's crazy yes. how big of a business that has become. Um, so what did you learn when you look back at those 12 years? And I know mm-hmm. you're, you're avoiding other people's kids and I get that, but what did you <laughs> learn? What did you learn from that? I mean, honestly, when, when you think back about it, what was good and what wasn't so good and what do you do differently? Uh, what was good? I loved the aspect, the challenge. Uh, I had to put the business, I was in Seattle then, um, I had to put the business up to code for the standard of Washington state. I've learned that I could actually, if I'm really determined and if I want to do something, I, they told me, I'll take a bit, we'll take you about nine months to a year to get your daycare running. After two months, I was up to code and I had my license. I learned that anything is possible if you really want to. And that was you pushed your way through it. Yes. I was doing the daycare during the day and I was studying at night. So I did my study as I had my daycare as well. And having my own daughter um, at the same time. Yeah, give it, not busy. Not busy at all. <laughs> no, all right. No, so no, that no. was the good. So you learned that you can push through anything, that you're not going to be held down, that you, well, again. That reinforces... anything is possible. If you right. really want something. Even if people tell you, no, you're not going to be able to do it this fast or you're not going to be, it's not going to be achievable with the time frame you give yourself. If you really want to go after something, go for it. Don't let people um, make you think otherwise. If you believe in yourself, you can do it. And, and that still, you still rings true for you? Oh, yes. Okay. All right, good. Oh, I, I, I know that. <laughs> Having met you, I, I definitely know that. No, in a positive very, way. I know, it's a positive. I know I'm a very stubborn, determined person when I want something. <laughs> I, I, I understand. Okay. Sometimes so, good, sometimes bad. But. I get it. But that you know what, though? That's the way life is. It is good yes. and bad, right? That's kind of, in the bad, you can do a lot of good. The bad will make you good if you push through it, right? I mean, other, or you can end up in the corner. I always say this. My wife hates it. Sucking your thumb in the corner. But when you oh, push it. through it, how about this? Okay, so that I was a good. I think we all have those moments, right, that <laughs> we just want to be. I call it, I, I'm not in the corner. I'm under the table sucking my thumb uh, sometimes. So get out there. <laughs> crying a little, saying, okay, why am I doing this? And then, then 10 minutes later, it's like, okay, let's go do this. <laughs> so that was what you learned, the positive. And I think that's very mm-hmm. strong. What was the stuff that's not so good? <sighs> During the, my daycare? Yeah. Or? yeah. I mean, I, I just think that 12 years is a long time. So you, you've you seen it all. You've obviously figured it out. You can't go for 12 years. You know, most businesses end in five. So the fact you've made it past five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, and 12 would tell me that you know what you're doing. You figured stuff out. But what was the stuff that when you look back, maybe there's no way around it. Maybe it's the employee issue and the, the heavy control government has over the employee issue. Um, or, you know, what was it for yeah. you? <laughs> for me, it was I had a maximum of kids I could have in my daycare. Um, to me, it was I cannot expand further than what I was. Huh. And that was to me is like I had to be better than this. I don't want to do twelve hours a day anymore and not having my weekends because during my weekend and my daughters, I'm still kind of <laughs> playing or doing daycare things. But I had to replenish everything for the week, make sure we have enough food. 
and preparing my, cur- preparing my curriculum, I'm like, this has something, something has to be better than this. So uh, scaling, like scaling was the issue for you. So if you could have scaled it, then you could have hired more people that would have handled those uh, things. But at, and I, I capped, did try. I, I did try. I, w- I was licensed. I actually, with my study, I could have a, a big daycare of 50 kids if I wanted or even more. Uh, I did go and got, look at two commercial um, buildings, but that's when I decided, no, I, I can't. I don't want to do 12, 12 hours a day doing this. Now, dealing with more employees, more kids, more parents. Um, I, I figured it must be something better than this. Okay, so, <laughs> so that was I, w- it. I went back to a smaller, smaller daycare, more quality by myself, and try to figure out uh, what I was going to do until my daughter was old enough. <laughs> and, and let me ask you this, because I, I've heard this from other retail businesses, not not necessarily retail, maybe service businesses, that when they went back and scaled back significantly from when they scaled up, they actually made as much or more money than they did when they had yes. all those extra people and all those extra hassles. Is that yes, fair? that is fair. Hmm. I actually could charge more per kid per week because I was having less kids so I can get more quality with my um, my background and all that. So the parents were very, very happy. So they were happy to actually pay more. <laughs> well, uh, let's take this, this concept forward. Is that when you think of Amazon businesses, and you know a lot of them, and you know a lot of workings of a few of them, would you say that that's advice that should be heeded in the Amazon world? Should they get to 20 million and be as big as they can be? Or could they be just as content being a three person shop or something like that? Uh, yes, I agree with that. I think sometimes having more employees and more, um, you're not making necessarily a lot more, um, depending on your model, right? Everybody's a little different. It depends on what you want. If you want to say, okay, I make, 20 million this year, uh, just because it is satisfying, I would rather at my age now, I've <laughs> been where I've been in life, I would rather have something that gives me what I want, be comfortable and not have as much stress. So it, it depends also as your stress level and what, what you're after. Um, but I, I believe that sometimes scaling back gives you more, um, in a, in the short term anyway, maybe in a long term as well. I like that scaling back gives you more. Um, I think that's a lot of responsibility. I mean, I think that that's the thing. The measure for me is responsibility, right? When you mm-hmm. when you have to go home. All right, here, let's go back to your daycare days, right? You had the responsibility for those three employees. So you had to make sure there were kids in the house. You had to make sure that everything was right because not only were you feeding yourself, you were feeding those three families. Um, yes. And so that's really, that, that's a lot, that weighs on you. So when you lose, you know, two or three families, that was probably devastating in your world. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That could be. Actually, I had a, le- a waiting list. But if you lose somebody, um, your employees still get paid. So you're not. Hmm. <laughs> the, you're the one that's losing because you still have to feed your family. Yes, your, your employees. So it could be a little bit stressful uh, think, at times. I think the challenge in our world is we all see big numbers from a lot of people. Um, and in your circle, you travel, you've seen some pretty big numbers now. And it's oh, like, yes. oh, you know, you get a little envious. I mean, to be honest, we're human. Mm-hmm. You get a little envious and like, man, I, I should do that or I want to do that. And then, but then I sit back and I'm like, hmm, do you see what it takes for them to do that? First off, they're outliers, right? They're, they're that good. They're better than me. And I, that's why I'll say it because I'm, I, I know myself probably better than anybody. Um, and so therefore I don't have what it takes to make that easy. So I would have to work four times as hard as him and yes. I'm already working way more than I want to. So I'm like, uh, okay, <laughs> check off the list, yes. move on to yes. the next one. And I hope more for, people get there. <laughs> no, t- t- definitely. Uh, and for me, I think I do have, um, I, I do speak French. So even though I've been speaking English for a long time, I know my learning curve because my background was not in business. Uh, people came to me once and like, what's your ROI? I had no idea what an ROI was. That's how, how, I, how I did not know anything about business. I was like, wow, I've got a long ways to go. <laughs> well, but that's a maturity too, right? So the fact that you were willing to learn that, right? You know what it is now, right? Fair? Yes. Okay. Yes, I do. So the, I mean, but how much better? Oh, that's a good, this is, this is a good discussion. I think this could be something interesting for people. So you've been plugging along. You've had success with private label on your own before you really knew anybody else. And, yes, I, and, I have no idea what I was doing. I think at that point. <laughs> right, and so you, but you had success with it. How yes. Mu- how much better has it been now that you, these other business metrics have been entered into your life? 
Oh you- my God. It's a lot. It makes a huge difference. I, sh- I wish I would have started talking to people and networking and learning by talking. Or well, seeing could you qualify that? Could you, could you say, Hey, my business is 50% more profitable. Therefore I could have done 50% less work and had the same results if I would have invested in reaching out to you. Do you get what I'm trying to get to? Yes. Yes. I think from last year, I already double. Um, so 50% more. And you're going to say that that's a hundred percent from your networking and learning from others, the shortcuts and things that you struggled yes. with. Yes. Whoa. I didn't even know I could Whoa. actually have a sourcing agent. So this is new to me. I just hired my first one, which this is gold for me. But yes, this is definitely from networking, listening to podcasts, which I was doing a little bit of po- listening to uh, uh, podcasts or going on YouTube. Um, but talking to people, networking, definitely hundred uh, percent. Yes. So, so, so this is, this is, I want to pause here for a second. I want to do this two different ways. One, you said your business is up 50%. So you, you've expanded your business, which is what your goal was with, mm-hmm. with just by investing in, into getting to know others and boom, you yes. shot forward or you could have been doing it in half the time and had the same result. So either way, so if your goal is to work the four hour work week, that mysterious four hour work week that we're all going for, <laughs> I, don't, yes. I don't see it, but anyway, but let's just say, but so if you want to have, if you're happy with your results and you want to work half of it, Joey's saying, Hey, get out there and network because the things that yes. you've learned from others, right? That's not, I mean, how many videos do you have to watch to really understand what they're saying as opposed to, Hey, you know, Steve, here's what I'm doing. And, and then I'll be like, Oh, why don't you just do this? And you're like, huh? <laughs> and then boom. I know. Right? I know. <laughs> For me, that was like, really, you can do this that way. Uh, there are so many things I've learned just by talking to people. They're like, Oh yes, look at my computer. I like what showing me just with a seller app. I didn't even know there was a seller app. So that's how, <laughs> but I think that's part of it. The innocence that you just, you know, you pushed your way through this again, we're back to you knowing yourself that you could just push through anything, right? Determination. Yes. Anything is possible, Julie, if you really want it. So you exactly. pushed your way through and did I, it. I called myself the little turtle. I am slower than most people in this business because of where I went and I did not network. If I wouldn't network from the start, I would have been a lot further sooner, but that's okay. <laughs> well, let's talk about networking. Uh, you know, how do you come about networking? How did that happen for you? <laughs> mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the true story. There's a real story uh, here. Die. Single guys, single guys. Listen, <laughs> not that she's available. She's not. I'm just telling you though. Listen. Well, I was, I, I met somebody on Facebook um, mind you, I, at that point, oh, that's another story, but at that point I didn't even know. Uh, I just, you know, when you have people in common on your feed on Facebook, uh, I've you been say, married oh, yeah, for like- 33 years. No, I, none of this makes sense to me. I mean, I have none of this, uh, connection okay, well, if stuff. If you go on Facebook, sometimes they will say, Oh, other people you might know, or you might be interested because you have a lot of mutual friends on Facebook. So they, Facebook kind of, suggest friends for you so, so was, it's a matchmaker facebook it's not is. a matchmaker to just say hey, okay you're already because i was like friending people that was doing amazon and uh, i'm also a scuba diver uh so i was friending people but i was not really talking to anybody uh, but there's one person in particular that uh reached back to me because i i did ask like, oh, okay we have a lot of friends in common why not add this person um and uh this person went like well you're going to ask me to be your friend, but you're not going to talk to me. <laughs> and my reply was like, yep. <laughs> exactly Good move. That. Oh, all right. <laughs> then I went, so are you an Amazon friend or a scuba diver friend? That's like, I didn't even know. Is there a difference? It's just because I was friending I had a lot of friends in common, so they could have been Amazon oh. friends or scuba diver friends. I didn't know. I didn't know if this was going to tell me, hey, the type of guy that's an Amazon friend is this guy, and the type of scuba diving guy. No, is no, a... it's just because okay. we had a lot of friends in common, and oh, those okay. are my two common interests, I guess, or my, the, the most people I was friend with. But then again, I was not even networking with them. I was just adding people, and 
looking at what they were putting. It's like just reading, right? Uh, what people are talking about their Amazon or scuba diving. And um, so, yeah, so this person in particular, and then he said, I, Amazon, and we started changing conversation. That was my first real networking with somebody that was doing Amazon. So this um, would be, this developed into a friendship. I mean, to be fair, let, let's just call it what oh, it yes. was. Oh, yes. This was at a friendship, you, a business yes. friendship at first though, right? I mean, a common interest and you're talking about things. Hey, what do you do with Amazon and what do I do with Amazon, right? Yeah. We went from a few emails, like quickly, it's like, oh, do you want to do a phone call? And I said, oh, why not? So the phone call lasted an hour or so. And we're talking about, yeah, Amazon, what are you doing? Where you're at? Where you're starting? Um, yeah, not, it was just not a with the not with the interest uh, up front. To be fair, I mean it was really just a common. I, I want to say it, I, I don't think I'm saying it the right way. Not with a, uh, a possible relationship interest. It was oh, at no, this point. No, no. It was hey, we both have the same thing. You're the first person that reached back to me in this Amazon world. Yep. So therefore, I could you know you're almost yes, asking was, for I help was actually, in a weird way. I was actually way. dating somebody at the time. Um, briefly it was a new relationship it was not going to go anywhere but yeah no that that went for months we were just friend talking we had a lot in common and yeah he's kind of helping me with my business where you're at what are you doing and yeah okay, we're so talking every fast forward so yeah that was not that was not a oh my god he's cute Let, let's see if they're no he is like, cute <laughs> i will say he's cute. Not a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was not a dating site or any no there was no thought actually this person was so is still to this day so far away uh from me that the thought didn't even uh, cross my mind so the other benefits other than him being cute and now that you have a relationship fast forward you got entered into a huge network, his network, correct? Yes. And all of yes. a sudden, answers magically came to you. We're, think back to some of the questions now that you didn't know or you weren't certain about that are now reinforced because of this network and the connections you've made. Are you like to yourself, duh, I should have known to do that? Or, man, I thought about oh, yeah. that. I mean, it, so, so that's the advantage, Right. I mean, yes. You know, obviously the, the, the romance thing is separate. But I mean, realistically, what did that cost you? And yet, as you say, your business is doubling this year because of it. Not not the relationship yes. part, the networking part. The networking I, is huge. I didn't even know what PPC were and how to do them. Um, actually, uh, that that was huge. The uh, um, this person, I we can say his name, Jason, uh, told me you should go. There is a. Uh, conference in toronto as it was the first canadian toronto conf uh, conference so i was very happy to go there and, oh they were um, smart guys too they were some smart guys network with them yes shout out to the thing and dixon yeah, i love smart. the fact that i could be because a lot of things online is veer to um u.s united yeah. states everything is united states i felt so alone as a canadian and you know the difference between Private label and retail arbitrage is very different. It's a different beast. Well, Canada and United States is another. Another, you got to approach things a little differently. So for me, finding Canadian people, and and again, I would have not know there was a Canadian group if I have not network and met Jason and then talked to me about yes, there's a Canadian group. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> and so networking is huge, huge, huge. If you want to help yourself, network. And and so I just saw somebody else say that they went to um, uh, the Rocky Mountain and he now has a deal with two other sellers where they're receiving pallets together, which is unbelievable to me. Mm -hmm. There's a, a when you when you spend that much time with somebody, a trust develops, a bond develops, and because I say this all the time, our business and our personal life are so intermingled in a good way for us. Yes. And I would say yes. you would say the same thing, right? Fair. Yes. Oh, yes. A hundred percent. And you just brought something to my attention here. Um, you know, commingling is so big. Like, I think for me, I didn't want to talk to other people because I thought, oh, they're not going to want to talk to me because I might be a competition, right? Mm -hmm. They're not going to answer my question. That's where I was. That's why I never network. I never talk to people. I thought, oh, that's their secret. They're not going to want to share. That is such the opposite. When you start talking, people are happy to help you. They're happy to to guide you, tell them what they've learned. Um, I was shocked. I was 100% well, shocked. Well, because they, they realized that that's how they got started, right? So somebody started the, 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 the rock rolling down the hill. Somebody started it, 
right? Mm-hmm. And so somebody helps, somebody helped you, and then therefore you're willing to help the next person and vice versa, you know? Yes. Somebody, always, somebody always has something to add to the conversation. And I, I, think, I think you're a good example of somebody who was not in that world, pushed their way through it because anything is possible if you really want it, Steve. Right. That's what Julie tells me. (laughs) Anything is possible. But it's true. Right. So you push your way through it. But then it gets so much easier now that you expand your network and you can just say, hey, what do I do with this? Anybody handle blah, blah, blah customs? And I'm sure Canadian customs are way different. Okay. All right. So so you've seen that huge benefit when you think about the things that you still struggle with. What how do you approach that now? Because I'm sure life isn't easy for you and you have challenges in that. How do you deal with these struggles that you run into now? It's different that today than what it was before? Oh, yes, definitely. Because I know now I can actually ask um, the friends that I've made in the community uh, for help. Uh, they will point me in the right direction if they don't know the answers. So that uh, the struggles are a lot different. There are still struggles that are always going to be. I think we're always going to learn and everything is going to change. And you have to adapt to it. Um but uh, the struggles are a lot different now. Hmm. All right, here, here's another one I want to ask you, because I was thinking about this too with you. You've had a lot of success. You've been, you know, pretty successful. But yet you meet people who aren't. What's, your, mm-hmm. what's the advice you give them how to get past it? Because it can't be just, hey, you know, anything is possible. Just want it, right? It's not that easy. What, oh, no. What are you telling no. them? What are you advising them? Well, learn first of all, first thing is learn from things that don't work. I don't say mistake because they're not mistakes. We're all like in a school of uh, of life, right? So any things that you do, just learn from it. Don't get discouraged. Uh, learn from it and see how you can do things better. I have lots, like my first private label ideas sometimes, or some of the ones I come out, they didn't work. I lost a little bit of money. But you know what? Not too much. Be smart about what you're doing. Don't get discouraged. Don't be afraid to ask people for help that's mine and my big downfall I do not ask I try to do things on my own and if you want to succeed don't be afraid to ask for help and guidance from other people how about uh, you you uh the friends that you they're in different roles in this business because we as we all know this business is vast right there's just oh my god it, yes it's, uh, all, opportunities everywhere but which one's right for you have you learned a lot by participating in their businesses and watching the way they do things and then bringing it back to your private label world? Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, just seeing the process and how to uh, the inventory has been processed um, in other people's place. It's like, wow, okay, I, sh- I should do that. Why did I not think of doing that? It's so much faster. <laughs> oh, so seeing, because uh, you guys, the guys you know are mostly RA guys. And so seeing yes. that and watching that, you've been able to bring that back to your place and say, huh, I can take my private label and improve it process-wise. Have you documented oh, yeah, process. your process? Uh, no. no. No, I have not. I'm in a change of, I'm in the midst of changing my process right now. I'm actually going to move out of my house. <laughs> Uh, not moving me personally, but moving my most of my business out of my house to start learning to use um, uh, other warehouse 3PLs, which uh, my first shipment is coming there this week. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, and if all goes well and the numbers make sense, uh, everything's going to be shipped there instead of here now. Ooh. So that's going to free a lot of my time um, to actually source more items Um and, it, and also, I just got my first uh, sourcing agent, so that should be... I, I'm seeing a lot of change in the next uh, six months, three to six months, for sure. Yeah, but do you think you, knowing your personality, and I know the answer, you wouldn't have done it. You probably wouldn't have been successful if you would have done it a different way. If you would have outsourced your stuff to a 3PL and outsourced your stuff to a sourcing agent when you weren't comfortable yourself knowing how to do that, I don't think you would have been content. You would have been... No. You know, your expectations would have been different. Um, they wouldn't have met them. And then you'd be disappointed and probably give up. Yes, probably. Because if you look at the amount of money that will cost you to use a 3PL, you're like, no, I can do it a lot. Like, you need to know what is involved in doing it and see if it makes sense for you to pay for somebody to do it. Um, like a little bit of when you do, um, uh, you send, sell yourself yourself. Whoa, sorry, cannot talk now. If you sell your, uh, your stuff yourself, 
versus using FBA. The first thing I thought when I first um, used FBA is like, oh my God, the fees are so much. No, I'm going to continue doing it myself. Well, four days, four times a day at the post office in line with huge box that weighs a ton, you just start saying, okay, it makes more sense mm -hmm. to send it to FBA to free more time so you don't have to do all the packing yourself. So you just kind of learn. Um, you have to do it in order to know what it's worth. <laughs> or when you're a single person operation and you go on vacation and you have to turn off your merchant fulfill, but your FBA just keeps going and you see the sales sitting on that beach and you're like, hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. The silent team keeps working and they don't complain. <laughs> they don't call off and sick and they don't have any complaints. They're not the, no. uh, I'm not back in that daycare with all those kids screaming. I mean, this is, oh, this is believe the best. me. <laughs> if you have a lot of kids and somebody calls in sick, you know oh. your day's gonna be hell. <laughs> is that one of the things that keeps you motivated? Is the possibility of going back to daycare? Is that what it is that keeps you? I better get. I got to put an extra box in because otherwise, those screaming kids that would push me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have to agree. Yes, I I will never go back uh, to doing daycare, and that what drives me to keep going. Of course, I can do other things. I'm I'm always selling things on the side, so but. <laughs> So they keep you um, happy. It keeps me motivated to keep going. And they thought my goal is to be basically living by the ocean, uh, diving and having a lot of free time. So that's uh, that's the short term goal here or long term, depending. When you look at the habits that you've developed over time, right, because it, we know that you're willing to push through and do the work. What are some of the habits that you have that have really, um, really done well for you over time? Uh, the habits that I've well, had. like to me, I got this goofy, I'm, I'm a, I'm an old dude. So we use a thing. <laughs> I think, these, I think for, we're close in age there. So don't say that. <laughs> the kids today, there's these things called legal pads. They're these big eight and a half by 11. It's a paper. It's like this white thing with lines on them. And oh, I write yes. my to-do list. Oh, oh, yes. So you know what papers. So I write oh, my yes, to-do yes. list I'm out a, on. I'm a paper, yes. And I have I'm these little boxes. List. I love yeah. it. Uh, and I have my little boxes, my categories. And I do it just about every day. And I have legal pads. One, two, three, four. I can see four within arm's reach right now. Four separate <laughs> legal pads right within arm. Five. There's five. <laughs> Um, and, and yes, okay, and on my desk, better. I do have a lot and of my desk is myself. still a mess. My desk is still a mess. I still haven't cleaned it. But but so for me, I keep a list and I try to track and I try to prioritize and that kind of thing. What's it for mm -hmm. you? What are some of those habits that have really helped you advance? Oh uh, well, I do I do have my list uh, everywhere, and now I I try to combine my list. So that's very important for me to to do that. If not, I forget um, a lot of things. So I have to write down things every day. Uh, I do the same thing every morning. I get up, I every get my morning. tea every morning. For the most part, things have changed a little bit now that I'm in a relationship. But for the most part, uh -oh. it's always. <laughs> Whoa, all right. <laughs> when I'm at home, that's what I do. I get up, I, or I get my tea. Uh, I mark down everything that needs to be done for the day, prioritize uh separate personal to business. Are you checking email at this point yet, or are you still? is this done before email? No, first thing I do is check my numbers from the night before ah, nice. and see what the profit is. <laughs> okay, I think we just saw the real Julie right here, right now. <laughs> Number one, didn't do anything else, didn't even get her tea. She's checking last night's sales to see yes. where her profit is. Yes. Nice, nice. So okay. I have to do that. I have my spreadsheet and I compare the sales from this year to around the same time last next last year and uh see how much uh increase it is and it's a real real motivation and how long me. have you been doing that uh for about seven months now and has that Six changed months? things i mean has that put the spark back in for you not that oh you goodness. lost it not that you lost it but do you get what i mean is that like giving you well, that to see that month after month i see my real data my real numbers this is how much sell i've done compared to last month and seeing the number increasing it gets me motivated to find more product to make automate my my own process uh better uh it's it's yes it motivates me to like sometimes i'm like oh i don't want to even want to take my shower now i just want to keep working i'm like <laughs> no go shower then shower. come back <laughs> how long does it take you every day to do that uh Maybe 10 minutes, five minutes, five to 10 minutes. You're sparking your day 
and it's giving mm-hmm. you the incentive. Okay, so then you get your tea eventually, and we get a shower, and then we don't need to know about that. What else happens? <laughs> what else is, do you do that catch your focus? Uh, I try to stay to think every morning, too, about three things that I'm grateful for. Ooh. It could be that today it's sunny, as simple as that, uh, that I'm healthy. My, my daughter, I don't know if you know that, my daughter has had uh, health issues all her life, so just uh, that she's okay. Uh, so I, I try to find three things that I'm grateful for every day to try to stay grounded. What's important is simplicity. Mm. And so that's all before breakfast. I mean, that's a pretty that's a pretty good start to the day um, because a you're now. What happens if the sales suck? Is that gr- does that motivate you too? Because it's like okay, I need to step it up. Now is the day uh, I step it up. It happens. I actually, I, I learned, I learned the patterns like Fridays are really bad for me for sales, like by looking at my numbers so closely. So I know Friday will always suck. So it's okay. I'm not discouraged by that because now I know it happens pretty much every Friday. Um, so that I don't know why exactly Sundays are my best day sales. I've known the patterns. So I kind of try to tweak a little bit. What else can I do on Friday? to hire those cells. So I'm not discouraged. I just, uh, I'm a problem solver. When there's a problem, it's always a solution. So, okay, well, maybe we'll increase the PPCs on Friday. Um, just to try, try to see if we attract more people. Uh, try to do a little bit more um, other advertisement outside of Amazon to attract people to uh, my site. So uh, hmm. I don't get discouraged. I just, uh, actually motivates me to try to find a way how to fix it or how to make it better. And if, if it's not possible, then so be it. I think it's so powerful, though, the fact that you're working on your business. You're working on, and I don't want to call this a weakness, you're working on the opportunities. You're seeing it as, hey, Friday's an opportunity. I know my sales are going to be soft. I'm not willing to accept it. I'm going to try and fix it, and I'm going to try and figure it out. That's working on your business. That's ultimately the best use of your time. And I get it. I mean, remember, Steve has a big merchant fulfill. You've been at my warehouse. You saw it. I have a big merchant yes. fulfill. <laughs> so I get it. So I understand that. But the fact that you recognize that that's a better utility, that's better, you know, so ooh, love it, love it, love it. When, <laughs> when you think about where you're going, so you're not a big seller in the U.S. yet. No, yet. no, I only have uh, currently, I had five products. I pulled back two because they work extremely well. One of them is actually my best seller here in Canada. Does not work at all in the United States. I tried to push it, PPC, tried to do, I do have a few reviews that are good. Um, I have too many competition on that category for that product in particular. And I'm not sure how they get, where to get their product and at what price because it's not working for me. Well, but that, does that, that a lesson too that, you know, not everything crosses over, right? Maybe either culturally or whatever, or like you said, there's just so Mm -hmm. much competition here that that's not a necessarily a bad thing, right? What difference does it make if you have that product in Canada and some other product in the U S right? The things that you know how to do are the same, right? There's nuances of yes. doing it in Canada versus doing it in the U.S., but it's the same. So you just have yes. to find a different product for the U.S. To me, exactly. I've got three now. They're really good in the U.S. They're actually excellent here. They're good there. The ones that didn't work over there, I just kept them here. Um, but for the most part, which is interesting to me, that is my bestseller here. It was completely flopped there, and I did the exact same thing. So it's selling in Canada is very different than selling in the United States. You have to uh, address it a very different way. I think the way you start your product, um, your strategy for launching, is a little bit different. Well, could you um, speak to that a little bit? I mean, what would it be? What would what would when you look at that product that didn't do well here? You already said there was a lot of competition for the same thing. Yes. So you have to be a lot more aggressive launching your private label brand in the United States like this is I have about 12 13 products here in Canada and uh, of course in the United States I'm brand new there's no reviews for some reason here in Canada it's a lot easier because probably there's less competition hmm. um, so people a little bit you know if nobody sells let, let's say you're for socks earlier like well let's say nobody sells the type of socks you're having here, you have more chance of people buying your product. So I can start a launching strategy with just a lower prices versus in the United States, you need to be more aggressive with advertisement because nobody will find you Hmm. because there's so many socks. Like you need to make sure people see you. 
versus Canada, well, if only five people sell socks, well, you'll, you'll be fined a little bit faster, so you can go with a lower price. Um, but even with your lower price, there's so many other people in the United States that sells at a lower price, so you need to do something else on a top of that in order to make yourself seen. Well, then that makes me question, what's your plans? Are you thinking, I mean, have you run out of the market of Canada? You, like, tapped everything you possibly can, therefore you need to get to the U.S.? Uh, oh, God, no. <laughs> or, right, well, I mean, that's really it. I mean, it's like, why would you come to the U.S. and sell product until you tap out? I mean, that's kind of the things that would go through my head because you got so much opportunity there. Um, well, but you hear everybody saying, oh, you make a lot more sales in the United States, Um and uh, I, I, I did some sales. I did try DRA. I have a hard time staying focused, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so during Christmas time, and I realized, wow, uh, yes, you can sell a lot of things faster, especially during the four quarters in the United States. I'm like, well, maybe I'm going to try it and see if uh, what my products do there. So I can, it's not much harder for me to, to buy 2,000 or 5,000 items. Actually, it's just cheaper. <laughs> So why not be able to extend okay. to United okay. States okay. and then extend sense. to UKs? And it, it was supposed to be this year, but things happened. That I'm not in the uh, that UK. That relationship getting yeah. in the way again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. That's that it. networking <laughs> quote, networking. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, no, I get yes, it. That came into the equation. <laughs> You know, we need somebody to blame. No, I think it's interesting. I think I think the cool thing to me is I agree with you, right? So you're saying, hey, might as well take advantage of it. For me to add an extra thousand units or whatever, hey, I'm going to save a little bit of money. And so I might as well do it in both markets because it sort of makes sense. But not yes. in every case. And I think that that's a lesson. So are you now approaching the U.S. differently with products? Are you more selective and saying, hmm, not this one? <laughs> Yes, I will go now and check how many sellers there is and what is ah. a sales, what sell, point sales they're selling. So the things here that are less expensive, I'm going to hold them back for now um, and get my name and my brand. Because a lot of my products, people will buy two or three. Um I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, like a bunch. Yeah, they'll, they, when they see it, they also bought. They also bought. Yeah, they go kind of back to my store and buy different items so i think when i need to start it that's where my my uh my strategy is and it seems to be working is going with my bigger pricier items that there's not as many sellers and then later on introduce the less expensive because my brand name will be uh more recognized there too okay all right and uh, if you can bundle to in different things if that makes sense to to get that average price up too hmm. I have, uh, yeah, I'm just starting bundling. That's another thing. I even thought of it until I network. People Add to your like, network. <laughs> I'm like, really? I should have thought of that. Let's <laughs> try the bundling <laughs> thing. <laughs> so, so Julie, all right, you got a lot going on. You got a lot of responsibility. But it sounds to me like you're figuring things out. You're pulling back in things that you're capable of doing. You're saying, hmm, don't want to do that because I want to put more effort into the part you love, which is the sourcing and and then bringing those products to market and getting them launched. Yeah, what that's the fun part. <laughs> what else are you working on in your business? Um, because, you know, the goal of this podcast is to help people who get stuck, right? Mm -hmm. So, you, And you've been stuck, and now you've been networking, and you've got advanced, obviously, and you've re, you built a network of friends and trusted confidants that you could help get push you past these problems. What are yes. you working on now to help flow into the future? Uh, I am trying, yeah, uh, what are you talking about what I'm working on personally or, uh, sorry, I just want to okay. make sure I understand Jeez. correctly uh, here. Sure, we'll go there. I mean, geez, I didn't know we were going to go there. We can. Uh, okay. Uh, no, I meant, I meant for the business. I mean, so when I think about, like when I look at the maturity of a business and the way a business cycles go and stuff like that, you clearly have pushed past that point. You're now out of the toddler stage, way out of the toddler stage, and you're into that place now that you can start, you know, those, I don't want to call them golden years because you're not that far, but you're you're definitely making progress. Man, if somebody could see my hand, my hand is going forward like you're waving, like you know what I'm talking about, and you're just pushing forward, like, uh, you know, um, really fast. And so when you're looking at the path forward, where's it going for you? Maybe that's, I don't know if I asked that the best way. The path forward was going, for me, 
uh, I, let me know if I'm not uh, responding right. But for, for me, what I'm getting from your question is where, like what I want to do right now is make sure that I automate a lot of my process so I can spend more time on the things that I'm good at, uh, finding the key people to help me. Like I do have a good uh, accounting now. I got a good sourcing agent now. So I'm trying to find the key people to make my life easier, but finding if I don't know, I reach out to other people. So I kind of try to keep a balance, which is always no, So hard. you're not getting hung up. I mean, I, I guess, I, and I did not ask the question well, but you answered it so Sorry. much better than what I would have asked. I mean, but that's right. And so, so you're now at that place where you could just advance forward because you're not getting hung up and stuck and stopped. You're saying, okay, no. I get to this place. I don't know the answer. Boom, put this out to my network. Okay, I get a bunch of answers. Yes. I pick the best one. Boom, plug it into my system, and then I mush, move forward. <laughs> yeah, come, years ago, um, go back to a little bit of what, what my story is, is uh, I was doing a lot of RA, and then I went to OCEL. Um, I actually did you stuff, RA, uh, wholesale. Then one of my old sellers stopped carrying one of my best seller, and I didn't know what I was going to do. I researched, I think it took me six months before I decided like, I need to do private label. <laughs> I wanted to learn how to do it. I wanted to learn how to import. I wanted to learn everything. You got to stop trying to make it to know everything right away. I kind of jumped in the water with my eyes closed. I'm like, okay, like what's going to happen? Or my first importation, they, the, the UPS called me. It's like, well, do you have your importer number? I'm like, nope, uh, <laughs> I don't. <oops. laughs> I thought I was prepared. Faux pas. I, I thought about everything but that. And it took five minutes to get it, which was not a big deal. It could have been a big deal. But it, it, what I'm trying to say here is at some point, I tried to prepare for everything and I missed one of the most important thing. And it was not a big deal. So, so, so just keep, keep going. Don't try to learn everything. Just kind of go for it. Learn on, as you go. Um, just you've got to make the first step. You don't want to be too scared about it. Just don't be like irresponsible and put a lot of money. Like my first order was very small. I'm like, if I made mistake, if I lose it all, I'm going to be able to still put food on the table. Um, so you've got to be responsible person, but take calculated risk. I'm like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so let's see what happens. <laughs> but you get through it. And so that's the point. It's just just launch, right? Or Seth Godin always says, just ship it. And then you figure out some of the details. Now, you don't want to miss the big ones because <laughs> you got no, lucky. No, no. But, but, but fair. I mean, it, I think it's a very sound advice. You like, know, I, I wouldn't have, like my first order was maybe $1,000. I would have not made an order of 20000 not knowing what I'm doing. So I'm looking at my water bottle here. So your example was, hey, I was selling wholesale. The company sold. My number one seller was this water bottle. And then they said, eh, you know what? It's not working. Probably because they're selling mostly to retailers. And the retailers are all dying. And so they're like, eh, we're not going to carry it anymore. And you're like, wait, I need that. I need that. Oh, yeah. So I look you everywhere. Canada, product. United States. Yes. And you I just know. create your own. Good lesson there. Everybody hear that? That's a big <laughs> lesson there. You know. Yeah, you had to figure it out. Where can I find it? Where can I buy it? Like my first time I have a sample shipped here, it cost me $50 for something that is very inexpensive. I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> do people have to do that? And I'm like, and I've got like a lot of samples. And so that was a lot of $50, $60 for little things. I'm like, oh my goodness. But until I found the quality that I wanted, I had to put down the money that Again, and at the beginning, which is anything important. Anything is possible if you really want it through determination. Yes. Julie Raleigh. That's my quote of all for today. That's going to go on a merch <laughs> shirt. I'm going to have this shirt produced. It'll be available on Amazon. Okay. So I'll buy two. <laughs> I, think, I think you answered the question, which is the one I always ask. What, what do you do when people get stuck? And what's your advice? I think you've given solid advice. Is you know Just ship it, launch don't struggle, get through it. I think setting up the, uh, you know, thing that for me that I'm going to take away from this conversation is that, you know, put in the process, figure out all the stuff that you know, and then the gaps, reach out to your network to help you fill them in. Because if you develop that network, and how did you develop that network? You put yourself out there, right, Julie? Right? You put yourself yes. in a vulnerable position. Yes, which is for me, people that know me uh, know that I do not like to... Uh, 
uh, like I, I'm starting now to be a little bit more active in group. I used to be one of those that stay there and read and not participate. Uh, I think it's very important and not be shy. There's no stupid questions. So go ahead and ask, put yourself awesome. out there. Just, awesome. just, just do it and make sure, yeah, you network with people. Um, they try to make work with people that are knowing the same things that you're doing because it is a difference. Yeah, you want to you want to you want to play up. I mean, ultimately, the best thing you can do is to find people who are a little better than you, um, who have got more experience, because that's where you're going to really learn. But don't yes. forget, don't forget when somebody reaches out to you to help them, you know, because somebody helped you. You can't forget that. And sometimes I think no, we get away from so. that and we forget that somebody helped you. I don't care who you are. Somebody helped there, you. There's one person that called me for advice and actually uh, went to meet for coffee. And he actually taught me something I didn't even know. <laughs> and, yet, so, <laughs> and yet he was getting to you he, for advice. He, he was looking for me for advice. And by talking, he helped me as well. Uh, so you can learn from anybody. It doesn't wow. matter where they're at. And sometimes you both want to don't know an answer. You can work together to find the information. So it's a lot easier and a lot less lonely. <laughs> and it's a less... That. A lot less harder when you do it with other people. All right. So if somebody wants to follow up, what's the best way? Uh, on Facebook, but say okay. something because I won't talk to you. Yes. Them. Yeah. Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Try. She's not going to talk back. No. I'll, uh... <laughs> I, and it's true. A lot of people ask me to be friends lately. I do not talk. Even if they talk, say hello, I will say hello. But you got to talk a little bit more and ask me if you want help, if you need something. Ask for but questions, that is, that's it. Yes, ask for a question and, and, and ask, yes. I'll have that <laughs> contact information in there. Julie, thank you so much, man. Thank I'm you just, so much, I'm, I'm, I'm so encouraged because I think, A, you enlightened us to the world of Canada. You let us over the border. You let us over the wall, because I know there's a big ice wall there. <laughs> and you let us peek there, on the other side. <laughs> there is a lot of opportunity here. You just got to look at your product because there's a lot less competition you can price yourself higher as well so see that everybody see that julie's pretty smart hey thank <laughs> you so much i wish you nothing but success thank you so much thank you for having me great interview uh very very cool story very cool lady but just so cool to see somebody who's figured it out again you know you can hear in her voice she was going to be successful no matter what um, but there are degrees of success. And again, I, I don't know how well I articulated it, but it's true. Her results are because of her scaling her business because others have helped her fix all the little things that she skipped by because she didn't know or didn't know any better or didn't take the time to learn because you got so many other spinning plates to deal with. So boom, fast forward, her business doubles. So she could do one of two things. She could scale back her business and have the same, if she was content with her results, and gain time gain time like no else or in her case she can double her business whichever way you want whatever way is right for you there's a huge lesson in this interview and I suggest you go back and listen to it again it's hard it means you're going to have to put out with the crazies and the perverts and the whack jobs and that but then you're going to find real people real people that are like-minded real people that have the same struggles you have real people that want to uh still love their family and yet grow a business real people who need others to believe in them real people who have the same interests that all exists in this world and you just have to find the right people and i think julie has done a great job with it it's a great lesson for us all ecommercemomentum.com ecommercemomentum.com take care thanks for listening to the ecommerce momentum podcast all the links mentioned today can be found at ecommercemomentum.com under this episode number please remember to subscribe and like us on itunes